Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God, God is good. good. God is good. We have our scripture reading for today, and it's Psalm 63, 2 to 4. I have seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your power and glory. You are love is better than life itself. How I praise you. I will praise you as long as I live, lifting up my hands to you in prayer. Friends, please join our hearts together as we get a word in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it is so good to be in your house this morning as we, we come into this place to offer our worship to you this morning. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and how you have blessed us through this week. And, and so many times we have seen your hand at work and we just stand in awe of you today. And Lord, we know that there are so many people that you need you for. So many people that have, have a hole in their heart that can only be filled by you. So Lord, it is my prayer today that your spirit move amongst us as never before, stirring our hearts and opening our ears and our eyes to what you have intended for us on this day. And we will give you all the glory, honor, and praise. For it is in the powerful and matchless and healing name of Jesus we pray today. And all of God's people said. Amen. You know, God's word tells us to put the full armor of God. And the one thing that we can do is put on the spirit of praise for the, the spirit of heaviness, right? And I'll tell you, this world brings some heaviness upon us. But God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So let's stand on our feet and give him the praise that he is so worthy of. Amen. Here I am to worship. Yeah. 
significant back surgery and I visited her a couple times through last week um, I visited her on Tuesday and then on Thursday and uh, she came through the surgery okay the doctor said everything went went as well as could be expected but uh, she was having some struggles in the hospital as far as not getting rest and she was having some pain on Thursday when I saw her well then I Sister Carol stops me this morning and said that she spoke with uh, Hilda this morning, correct? And uh, Hilda has a praise. First of all, she wants to thank uh, her church family for praying for her because, you know, prayer matters and prayer works. Amen? Amen. And Hilda is a 
walking, talking, living, breathing testimony to that. She is feeling so good today that whatever pain she had has subsided and uh, she is home and doing just, just wonderfully. So, you know, God is still at work and if you have any doubts of that, just talk to Sister Hilda. She'll fill you in. But uh, so glad to hear of, of how the Lord has touched, touched Hilda and is bringing healing to her. And we continue to pray for, for Hilda as God continues the process of healing. You know, I've said it once and you'll hear it till the end of time. You know, doctors can treat, but God brings the healing. Yeah. Amen. Any others that we'd like to share today? Any others? Yes, Wendy. Our doggy Sarah is 14 years old and she was very, very sick. Jerry called the vet the other day and they got her right in, which is a miracle. We took her in and it's Dr. Allen and he immediately took her for x-rays and said he wanted to do exploratory surgery the next day. And we didn't think that she was going to make it. He didn't think that she was going to make it. And he said that he would keep her asleep. And if things went the way he thought they would go, we could come and tell her goodbye. They called and said, you can come get your baby. Mm -hmm. He was able to operate on her, make her all better, and she is doing great. Amen. 14 years old. Praise God. God looks after our little furry members of the family as well. Yes. Yes, I had a reaction from that antibiotic I had. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing up the car today. Absolutely. Absolutely, the Lord can take care of that as well. Yes, Jade. I have a prayer. Yes. As you all know, my son turned 16 today, and he's not here because he, you know, had too many uh, friends over and stayed up too late tonight <laughs> last night. But uh, he was born, many of you don't know this, he was born pretty sick, he had asthma his whole life, and, you know, even had a long collapse at one point. And his life verse is, um, goes away upon the Lord, the walk and not the weary, the run and not faint and fly high and soar on wings like eagles. Amen. He knows it better than I do, unfortunately, on that one. It's his favorite one, but um, I sat there and watched him last night run through the yard with his friend and just realized how blessed that I am that the Lord brought him through. His asthma has been gone for three years. He can run now with the other kids. Like, he's completely healthy. And the Lord brought that life verse to fruition in my son. Praise God. And I never thought that he would be as healthy as he is today. So I just praise God for that. Praise the Lord. Level 16, we made it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know what comes next after that. <laughs> Rich is back here. He's like, I don't know about this one. <laughs> yes, Linda. I'll speak for Al. We've, we've had a couple wonderful weeks. We really praise God for all the prayers we've had, and thank you. But we also are thankful to God for making it possible for our son to come and for our granddaughter to come from Germany. And that we spend some time with them. And Al's feeling much better the last couple days, so keep praying and keep feeling better. <laughs> We're, it's, it's amazing the, how, how how the Lord brings family around and how that just gives us that extra jolt of energy and not only that the jolt of energy we get from from the Lord himself from the Holy Spirit so any others we'd like to share this morning it is so good to to see everyone this morning um so good to see some new faces, some, some that haven't been here in a little while. Um, Sister Deborah doing so good to see you this morning. Um, and uh, we have a few people that are out on vacation and whatnot. So continue to be praying for those that if you look to your left, look to your right and you're missing someone, be praying for that person as well. Um, 
continue to be praying for our nation and its leaders at uh, all levels of government. Um, our nation really needs a touch from God. So continue to be lifting up our, our leaders at all levels. Uh, continue to be praying for the Stofto family as George is home and, and re recuperating from his procedure and continue to be praying for restoration of health there for, for George and also for Jim Galt as he is home and, and kind of working through things with his own health, serious health issues. Yes, Lisa. I was just getting uh, yes. Please pray for me. Allergies are really bad. And Absolutely. Good with her chemo too. Right. Yes. Continue to be praying for Cindy as she's struggling with allergies. Um, know so many people deal with that with with everything that's out there that nature provides and some things that nature doesn't. But I continue to be praying for her. Uh, so good to see Belinda this morning and continue to be praying for, for Belinda and her healing and recovery as well. Um, continue praying for Cindy Jarvis, Francis Underwood as they're um, working through their, their health situation with, with their cancer treatments. Do we have any others that we'd like to share this morning? Yes, Belinda. Uh, Stephanie, I read on their post that they want another hernia, you know, the fake other hernia. Mm, okay. They have about six weeks of complete bed rest. Just not a picture of the camera. Oh. Yes, we'll be praying, lifting up Stephanie in prayer for this, this other hernia and the six weeks of bed rest. And there are some days I don't like to get out of bed, but six weeks of it, I don't, I don't know if I could, I could do that. But uh, any others that we'd like to share this morning? Yeah, I'm so thankful that... Uh, Lord continues to watch over Lisa and I as she started this week in her new office and getting acclimated to that and, and 15 years of being under one system that she knew like the back of her hand and going somewhere else where things are completely different. So you kind of have to untrain your mind of past experience and go with, you know, what is new. So. You know, we're just so blessed and thankful that the Lord opened that door and provided that opportunity for Lisa. Any others that we'd like to share this morning? Any unspoken requests that we would like to signify by the uplifted hand? Lord knows our needs. He knows our hearts. Even if we do not speak a word out loud, he knows all that we need. And he can take care of that as well. So if you'll join with me as we now go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you and praise you for your goodness, Lord. For how you watch over your children day and night at all hours, Lord. Lord, we thank you for, for this day, for this wonderful day. It's yet another opportunity to, that we have to where we can come into this place and worship you. For that is what we were created to do, is bring glory and honor to your name and worship you. Lord, we thank you for this day as, as Richard is celebrating his 16th birthday, Lord. And, and, and as, uh, as Jade was saying, that there were so many challenges through, through the years, health-wise with Richard. And now to see him out running and playing and doing the things that he loves to do with his friends, Lord. That is just your hand at work, Lord. And we thank you for that. And, and Lord, we just we just celebrate that 16th birthday right along there with, with Richard and just, just love him to death. Lord, we thank you for, for family, Lord. You know, I, I know sometimes that, that family can be a point of contention sometimes, that, that there's often friction that can happen. But, but Lord, when, when family comes in from all over to just spend time with, with Pastor Al and Linda, how, how, what a blessing that is. 
Lord, I, I thank you for the work that you've done in, in both Pastor Al and Linda's life. And Lord, it is so good to see Pastor Al with that little, that little glimmer in his eye and, and that sense of humor is back and, and a little more firmness in his voice, Lord. Lord, we thank you for, for that work. And Lord, we thank you for, for the gift that you gave Linda and, and just giving her time to be able to relax and take some of that pressure off, Lord, as family came in. Lord, we thank you for, for the healing touch that you have bestowed upon Hilda today. The work that you've done in her life is just simply miraculous. The surgery that she endured, that you brought her through, Lord, that was by your hand and your hand only. So, Lord, we continue to lift up Hilda as she, she goes through this healing process, that, that you carry her through whatever rough spots she may encounter. And, and, Lord, we will give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Lord, we think of Stephanie this morning as she has this other hernia now that she has to deal with and doctors have placed her on, on six weeks of bed rest. Lord, we just, we just pray for a special touch upon Stephanie and, and this baby that she's carrying, Lord. Lord, we also lift up Barb who had this reaction to, this, to the antibiotic that she's on. Lord, we pray for a special touch upon her that, that you alleviate these symptoms and that you restore energy and health to her. Lord, we thank you for, for how you not only watch over us, but you watch over the things that matter to us so much, Lord. As Jerry and Wendy's little, little furry member of the family was ill and they wasn't sure how things were going to go. But Lord, how you provided a means for, for that surgery to happen and for their, for their dog to come home. Lord, we thank you for that as well. And for so many others that need a healing touch from you, from George Stofko, Cindy Jarvis, Francis Underwood, uh, Jim Galt. Lord, we pray for a special touch upon them today in each and every individual instance, Lord. We, we pray for a specific touch upon each one. Lord, we think of Millie this morning who, who's still dealing with the after effects of her surgery and how she's, it was so good to see her last week, but knowing that, that there were still challenges ahead. So Lord, we continue to lift up Millie to you and pray for, for her strength, in her body and and just for rest for her mind and her and her soul lord we pray for our nation this morning so many decisions so many things being done that that quite frankly do not reflect you but lord we know you have the last say we know that you are stronger and more powerful than any government that exists or will ever exist so, Lord, we pray that our leaders, before they do anything, that they turn to you. Lord, we, we need to return to being that one nation under God. And, Lord, for each and every hand that went up this morning, Lord, you know the need. You know exactly what needs to be done according to your will. So we lift those petitions up to you as well. And Lord, I also pray that, that our giving, that our tithes and our offerings be pleasing in your sight, O oh Lord, that, that you use those and you, you multiply those exponentially so that, so that the work of the church can continue, that, that we may proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus to the whosoever's of the world until all have heard. Because today, there are pulpits just like these all over this country and all over this world that are proclaiming the good news of Jesus. And Lord, I just pray for each and every pastor, each and every minister, each and every lay person who is standing in a, before a group today. I just pray for a special touch upon them as well. Lord, we're in a time where we live in a world where church isn't exactly the priority, that, that seeking you is well down the list. 
and pastor struggles so much with this and, and and Lord I just pray for a special touch upon each and every pastor each and every every person who's standing before a group today for a touch of strength for a touch of encouragement for a touch of the right word that can only come from you And we will give you all the glory, honor, and praise. For it is in the matchless and strong and powerful name of Jesus we pray this morning. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Yes, Lisa. Um, Cindy Jarvis wanted to share. She wanted to say, Good morning, Pastor Chuck. In my church family, I miss all of you so much. I am watching. Thank you for being here. 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 Lisa, is the, is the camera panned way out? No, I don't know. Go ahead and pan that way out. I would like for everyone, if, if you can, if you could stand up and kind of wave back there to the camera, to everyone that's watching at home, because they're part of this congregation too. They're part of this church family as well. It's so just a good morning wave to everyone. Whether, whether we're connected by the same building or, or whether we're connected by a camera lens, we're all part of the family of God. Amen? Amen. Thank you for that. All right. Well, once again, good morning and welcome to the house of the Lord. It's so good to ever have everyone here, whether in person or online. Welcome to Simon Road Church of God on this blessed Sunday morning. I do have a few announcements before I get into the, get into the message. Um, due to a unfortunate conflict in scheduling our youth ministry, we're going to have to delay a few more weeks. So we will begin Sunday, August 1st. So I sincerely apologize for this delay, but it's something that we just have to work through and uh, we will get this back on track as of august 1st that is our relaunch date um, another announcement that i do have is today is the final day to register and pay for the camp meeting kickoff breakfast that will be held on saturday july 24th so if you're interested in that, need more information, or if you'd like to pay for that, you can see Ronnie after the service. She'd be more than glad to receive your, your money for that because I know she has to get that all sent in and taken care of. So if, you are, if you're wanting to be a part of that or you're not sure exactly what that's all about, you can talk to Ronnie or you can see me after service. Be more than glad to answer any of your questions. And while we're on the subject of camp meeting, uh, camp meeting starts Sunday the 25th, and that is the last Sunday, the full week of this month. And out at the Welcome Center, you will find these. I print these off. These are a daily schedule, starting with Saturday the 24th with the uh, breakfast all the way through Saturday the 31st, that gives you a lot of information on the times and what's going on each and every day uh, there's a lot of information so if that is something of interest to you we have them out there at the welcome center in the little where you would get the uh, the church prayer calendar and the prayer, weekly prayer sheet that's available for you if we run out let me know i'll be more than glad to print off more copies that's a good problem to have if we run out but you'll see them they're either yellow or blue so there are three pages and you know forgive me if there were any typos i'm not exactly the best stenographer so but uh, one of the things at camp meeting that I'm really excited about, and I touched on it last week, is uh, starting on the 25th at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It only goes for about an hour. Uh, camp meeting kicks off with a good old-fashioned heritage hymn sing, where I'm sure that you'll hear some of your, your old favorite Church of God hymns that are part of the heritage of who we are as the Church of God. And the main service on that evening begins at 6 o'clock on Sunday. Then the rest of the week, Monday through Friday, it'll begin at 7 o'clock in the evening. 
And then Saturday, there's another start time. Uh, the Saturday service actually starts at 10 in the morning, and that'll be the closing service. So there's more information. You can get it on these really nice little fluorescent uh, pages that I printed. Uh, I printed them on those vibrant colors, that way they won't be so easily misplaced. But if you need any more information on that, we have a bulletin board full of announcements out there, uh, right across from the sanctuary, and then you can also pick up the, the detailed schedule at our Welcome Center. So, that being said, those are my announcements. Boy, am I tired. <laughs> Now I know how they feel on the news when they start going from thing to thing. <laughs> All right. Well, I love when the Lord gives me a message. And it's one of those messages kind of like last week where I kind of get in an arm wrestling tournament with, with, with spirit. I'm like, oh, I, don't, I don't know about this one. Yeah. Might, might step on a few toes, but, you know, we are, as pastors, we are called not only to preach the, the warm and fuzzy, easy messages, but we're also called to preach the tough ones as well. Amen. So I do my best to be obedient to that call. So today may be another one of those, but this is yet another in the line of the question series that I started a few weeks back. Um, the first of the series was, um, what if John 3.16 was not true? Do you remember that one? Hope you do. Um, then the following one was, why did Jesus have to die? And then this week. I want to begin our time by asking this very important question. Why should I go to church? After all, this is uh, the year 2021, right? So does church really matter anymore these days? And I've always been one that's looked at things from a little bit of a different angle or, or perspective. So as I was preparing for this message, my mind went in a rather strange direction. I remembered the old David Letterman late night show and how he always had some kind of an unusual top 10 list. It was usually pretty humorous, but there was always some thread of underlying truth there. So with that being said, here is my version of the top 10 reasons why people go to church. Now, he normally would have a, the band, they give a drum roll. We're not going to do that. Okay. Top 10 reasons why people go to church. I'm going to start at 10, go to 1. The 10th reason why people go to church. They now have air conditioning. <laughs> Praise God for air conditioning, right? <laughs> Merle and I were talking about that this morning. I love me some air conditioning, folks. Number nine reason why people go to church. The pews are oh so comfortable. Maybe, maybe not. Number eight. They sing, they sing songs that I really like. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Praise God. Number seven. They really serve a quality grape juice at communion time. <laughs> like that one, huh? Number six. They have some delicious carry-in dinners. Yeah. Amen. We'll have to get back to that. Number five. I get to sing as loud as I want to. <laughs> Unless you're sitting by me, you don't want to hear me sing loud. That'd be a reason not to go to church. Stay away from the pastor when he's singing. Number four. 
my kids actually behave themselves during church. Number three, the pastor isn't long-winded. Boy, no amen on that one. I thought I was doing all right. Number two, the Sunday school class has the best donuts. Uh, they look pretty good to me. And the number one reason why people go to church is that they live stream their service. Therefore, I can watch from home in my pajamas. All right. Well, that was kind of a little bit of funny, funny humorous there. But I hope that there are other reasons to go to church. And we're going to take some time today to explore the real reasons why we should want to go to church. I believe that in asking the question, why should I go to church, we can find three great reasons for this. And these three reasons happen to be a part of the foundation on which the church was started. So let's begin. I believe that we should go to church for God. So if you have your Bibles with you, please join with me as we look to the Word. We'll be looking at the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 22. But keep your Bibles at chapter 10, because we're going to be going through that a little bit here. Sorry, I just had a... Back spasm, that was fun. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22, in the New International Version says this. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. One of the main reasons that we should go to church is for God. We need to take time from our busy lives to make time for God. It's at the church that we have a chance to, to lay aside all the problems of our week and focus on spending time with God. Amen. It's in the church that we are able to easily enter into his presence. Or as the writer of Hebrews said, we draw near to God. Sunday morning at church is our time to look forward to visiting with God. A God who wants to visit with us. We can visit God any time during the week, but on Sunday morning, we put aside special time just for Him, just for our relationship with Him. One of the foundations of this church is worship. Worship is when we have a chance to be in God's presence. It's during worship that we spend time with God, to talk with Him, and to listen to Him. Friends, worship is so much more than just singing songs of praise to God. The entire service on Sunday morning is a time of worship. We sing songs to prepare our minds for our time together with God. During our time of singing, we can put aside our worries and our problems. All those things that come with everyday life and get ready to meet God and let him work in our own lives. Our worship continues as we pray for each other's needs and we also take communion together. We spend time listening to God's word as we try to hear what he has to say to each of us for living our lives in a manner that is pleasing to God. 
that we live in a manner that is helpful to others and that matures us as people and as Christians. So, we should go to church for God. Secondly, we should, all, we should also go to church for others. When people come together to, to share this crazy thing called life together, we call it fellowship. Fellowship is another stone in the foundation on which the church is built. We come together in God's presence to worship together. But we also come together to challenge each other, to grow and to hold each other accountable in living out our faith in everyday life. Once again, friends, hear the words of Paul as we look to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Paul says this, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Friends, it is in fellowship that we not only get to share our friendship together, but we share our faith with each other in order to build each other up. It is in fellowship that we remind each other that we are people called together by God to live life together for God. We come together so that we can encourage each other in the promises of God for our lives. When one of us begins to doubt, to doubt what God has promised, the rest of us are there to lend them strength and encourage them to keep on believing. When one of us falls, the others are there to remind them that God loves us unconditionally. Yeah. An image that comes to my mind comes from our military. There, there's, there's a mantra that the military uses. It's, was it no man left behind? You don't leave a brother behind. No matter what the circumstance, no matter what the situation, we're in this together. Kind of like three musketeers, all for one, one for all. You have a brother in arms that falls. Part of our duty is to help them up and carry them along, help keep them moving forward. I believe I preached a message last year, kind of on a similar tone, but one of the things that, that I've, I've learned in life is it's far easier to tear something down than it is to build something up. We were not created to knock each other down. We were created for fellowship, Amen. to build each other up, Amen. to encourage one another, to help each other through this crazy thing called life. I don't know about you folks, but I don't know everything. But there's, I have brothers and sisters in this room that know things about this that I have no knowledge of that can help me through. And then there are things that, that I'm aware of that perhaps you're not, that I can help you through. That's what we do. That's why it's the family of God. When one falls, the others are there to remind them that God still loves them unconditionally, that we help each other along. Thirdly, when we look at fellowship as being an important part of church, we should also realize that we should go to church for ourselves. It's in the church that we are reminded that God loves us unconditionally. It's in the church that we are reminded that as children of God, we are children of the King. And that makes us princes or princesses. Amen. We are special in God's eyes. In fellowship, we are supporting each other. But at the same time, we support and encourage others. We find that others are there for each of us as well. 
In Paul's letter to the Hebrews, again in chapter 10, looking at verse 24, continues with this line. And let us consider how we may spur on one another toward love and good deeds. Yes, we spur each other on, but each of us is also spurred on by the others. We challenge each other to love more completely and to do more good for the benefit of others. These are only just a part of what the church is all about. Church is also about helping each person find their sense of purpose in God's plan for their lives. It's in fellowship with others that we can be shown the areas we need to grow in. It's also in that same fellowship that we can hear direction from others. And it's in fellowship that we are reminded of the spiritual truths that are important to our spiritual growth. Some of the way that we learn these things and remind each other of them is from our time of worship. Praise songs are much, much more than just good music. They teach spiritual truths. We encourage each other and remind each other of spiritual truths and how special we are to God. But it's mostly through hearing God's word read aloud and explained to us that we really get a good sense of what these truths are and how they apply to our lives. And yet, that's another stone in the foundation of the church. Biblical teaching with practical application. Most people think this comes strictly from the pulpit. But each of us is given insight into God's word as this Holy Spirit reveals it to each one of us. If God gives someone insight, they should share it with others so that each one of us is able to grow from that knowledge and wisdom that God gives to any one of us. Friends, you, you may learn a lot from Sunday morning when I stand in this pulpit. And, and I give God all the glory on that. But friends, you also <laughs> learn so much from Sunday school class, from a Wednesday prayer meeting, from time spent, set aside, just you in the spirit looking at the word, getting into the word. <clears throat> friends, friends, it's through worship, fellowship, and biblical teaching with a focus on application that we discover the truth that the reason for that we go to church is for God, is for others. And it's for each and every one of us. Now, can we survive without going to church? Yeah, yes we can. But we won't grow, and we're missing the opportunities to visit with one another and with God and experience what God has planned for us. If we don't go to church, we would just rely on our own interpretation of what we've read in the Bible, if we read the Bible at all. Friends, please know that if you come to church, you will hear the Word of God preached. And you might, might have an aha moment of clarity and something that may have been said to you that was vague in the past. Can't tell you how many times when, when I've delivered a message and, and I, know, I know in the past, <laughs> in my past experience, one church I was at, there was a gentleman, he'd sit on the aisle, and during praise and worship, he would stand at attention. He wasn't singing outwardly. Uh, I'm assuming this is all inward worship, you know. But he would stand and, you know, watch the video screen, and words would scroll and so on. And then 
would come time for the message. The pastor would get up, and, or I would get up and get, get all my stuff situated, get my Bible, get my notes out. The gentleman would sit down. Would, I'm talking literally like outward snoring, like head back, mouth open, like always made me want to like have like a box of chiclets or something to see if I could <laughs> score some points but that would have been good but no it was it was incredible and it was every single Sunday and then by the time it would be either be I or another pastor and we would say as I draw this message to a close you'd see <laughs> And then praise team would come up, one or two songs, stand up, out the door. And me and the rest of the staff, we, we'd kind of talk about it because it was painfully obvious. And uh, I just come to the conclusion that he just wore himself out in worship, that he just expended all energy in that, that, that he didn't have anything left for the message, just got all tuckered out. But, you know, Using a lot of grace there, right? Maybe I don't know, but uh, but for that person, I don't know what was sinking in through osmosis. But I can't tell you how many times when when I'd be giving a message and then you'd see somebody, and you know when that look on a person's face when they're processing something, or when the light bulb goes off and it's like, oh, I just connected the dots. I, yeah, that's what that means. And, and it's just, as a pastor, that's such a blessing. That's, that's fulfilling. It's, it's like, yeah, they, they actually heard me. This mic does work. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if, you know, there's much more to coming to church but if we do not get into the word, we're missing the whole, the entire purpose of it. If we're not preaching and teaching the word, then we're just a Sunday social club, quite frankly. So I'm going to ask another question. I'm going to ask several. Is it worth getting up for church on Sunday mornings? Is it worth it to spend the night camping out in a parking lot to get concert tickets? Is it worth it to work overtime so that you can buy something that you really, really want? Is it worth it to spend time with your kids because tomorrow will be too busy and they'll be grown up before you know it? Can you find God in the noisy, distracted world that we live in? Friends, only you can answer those questions and decide what your priorities are. God, God waits patiently for us to make time with him. But as it is with every relationship, if time is not spent, the relationship suffers and may eventually die. Our relationship with God is the most important relationship that we will ever have. As much as I love my wife and as much as I love spending time with her, the investment that I make in my relationship with the Lord supersedes that. She holds the key to my heart. The Lord holds the key to my eternity. He determines my destiny, my eternity. We can easily spend two hours watching the latest movie, but I believe we need to be a clock watcher when it comes to going to church. Going to church should not be a guilt trip or an obligation. It should be something that we look forward to. Amen. It shouldn't be that we have to go to church. Instead, it should be we get to go to church. 
we get the chance to sit at the feet of the Savior only if we could just be available to him and what he has to say to us. There are no expectations, no lines, no physical labor, no entry fee. Just sit, talk, and absorb with God and his people. Friends, I can't tell you, we all know what the last year has been like. It's been crazy. But last year when we made the difficult decision to go strictly online because of the COVID-19 virus, tell you what, when, when June came around and we met with the leadership team and we decided on June 15th last year, we were opening the doors, we had a good plan in place, we still do, and people were gonna be able to come in. Man, there was, there was nothing like that. You know, I, I was counting the days. You know, that, that was a challenging time for, for the church. Not, not only was it a challenging time for the church, that was a challenging time for us personally. Sure, the message, the good news of the gospel was still being preached, although it was into a camera lens. the fellowship <laughs> the fellowship was missing I stood in this pulpit faithfully every week <laughs> and preached but it was like I missed <laughs> seeing faces I missed seeing that look of I got it I even missed those days of yesteryear of that guy <clears throat> snoring because at least that was some that was some interaction <laughs> But friends, we, we were created for fellowship. We starve for it when we don't have it. How important that is. It rejuvenates us. It revitalizes us. It gives us energy. It gives us drive. At this church, like so many others, we're fighting a battle out there to get people to come to church. I've heard many of the reasons and excuses why they won't come. And I, like, like so many other pastors, have tried to remove any of the barriers, as, as many of those barriers as possible, and just rely on, on the basics and the non-negotiables. So I gave you a top 10 list to begin. I have a few that I'd like to add here. Here are some of the excuses I've heard when I ask people, why they don't go to church. It's my only day to sleep in. I'm too young to worry about spiritual things. I'm too old to change now. There are too many hypocrites in the church. The service time is too early. I have nothing to wear. I personally, I don't like grape juice. I, I wish they'd serve wine with communion. I don't think wine is appropriate in church. I'll be in church once I get my life together. I work six days a week, so that seventh day belongs to me. The last one. Eh. My wife goes and she can bring me up to speed on anything that I really need to know. <laughs> Although some of these excuses might, might sound good to you, each of them is merely a justification for why a person doesn't go to church. Too often churches try to keep these people by making changes to the church. I love an article, I'm gonna share an article with you that I found. It's called No Excuses Sunday. This is what one pastor came up with. To make it possible for everyone to attend church service this Sunday, we are going to have a special No Excuse Sunday. 
Cots will be placed in the foyer for those who say, Sunday is my only day to sleep in. There will be a special section with lounge chairs for those who feel that our pews are just too hard. Eye drops will be available for those who, are, who have tired eyes from watching television late Saturday night. We will provide steel helmets for those who say that the roof will fall in if I ever came to church. That was my, that was my excuse. Many moons ago, that was me. Blankets will be furnished for those who think the church is too cold and fans for those who say that it's too hot. Scorecards will be available for those who wish to list all of the hypocrites that are present. Relatives and friends will be in attendance for those who can't go to church and cook dinner also. We will distribute stamp out stewardship buttons for those that feel that the church is always asking for money. One section will be devoted to trees and grass for those who like to seek God in nature. Doctors and nurses will be in attendance for those who plan on being sick on Sunday. The sanctuary will be decorated with both Christmas poinsettias and Easter lilies for those who have never seen the church without them. <laughs> We will be providing hearing aids for those who can't hear the preacher and cotton balls for the ears of those who think that he's too loud. <laughs> Friends, I hope to see you there. <laughs> no excuse Sunday. But really though, <laughs> we should go to church because it's something that is good for God, good for others, and good for ourselves. One final verse that I'd like for us to look at today is Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. And it says, and not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. So as our praise team comes to lead us in song, I'd like to close our time together with these final thoughts. Friends, let us make a priority to continue to meet together each week for worship, fellowship, and solid biblical teaching with practical application so that we can be equipped to reach out to others and to support each other as well as we all continue to grow in our faith. And remember the reasons why we should go to church. And they are for others, for God, and for ourselves. The church is important to God. So I ask this question today, how important is the church to you? Amen. Amen.
good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. 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 Friends, let us close our time in prayer. Let us pray. Father God, it has been good to be in your house. As we have heard your word preached. And that we have drawn close to you today through our songs of worship and our time of prayer, Lord. So, Lord, as we go about our day and our, our busy week ahead, let us not lose sight of who we are and what you have called us to be and called us to do, Lord. We are children of the King, children of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as any child, we simply emulate our Father. So Lord, as, as we go about our, our days and our week, Lord, it is my prayer that, that no matter where we go, no matter what we do, that, that people see you in us. And that they may see something just a little different and be bold enough to ask so that we may share of your goodness and your grace and your mercy and your love. Lord, I am thankful for this body of believers. I am thankful that we have this building to come to. Whenever the lights are on and the doors are open, Lord, it is so good as people come in because they come wanting, seeking you, Lord. Lord, I am so thankful for each and every one. And Lord, I am praying for those who are yet to come, Lord. Lord, we have plenty of room here. We just ask you to stir hearts and open minds. And we ask you to bring that increase. For it is in the matchless and powerful and strong name of Jesus we pray today. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.